In this lesson, I am going to talk about functions and relations. Let us first discuss relations. A relation is a correspondence between two sets. Suppose we have these two sets and I will call them capital X and Y. If X and Y are two elements in the sets, X is an element of capital X and small y is an element of Y, if a relation exists between X and Y, we represent it like that, we say that X corresponds to Y or that Y depends on X. So, of course, it's possible to have other elements in X. So here I have other elements in X, X1 and X2, and two other elements in Y, Y1 and Y2. So it's possible that X1 is related to Y1, X2 is also related to Y1, and X2 is related to Y2. So that is just a relation. You're just getting correspondence between the elements in X and the elements in Y. There are five ways to represent relations. The first of them is through diagrams. I am representing the relation between the set of states in the U.S. and the number of representatives. So in this case, Alaska corresponds to 1 because Alaska has only one representative. Florida corresponds to 25 and so on and so forth. Another way of representing relations is using ordered pairs. So for example, I have the same diagram in our previous slide and we represent this as the ordered pairs Alaska 1 because Alaska goes to 1. We have Arizona 8 because Arizona corresponds to 8, Colorado 7, and so on. We can also represent relations using tables just like this one. Now, it is possible for relations to have infinitely many elements if we represent them as ordered pairs. That is why we can also represent relations using equation. So, for example, here y is equal to 2x minus 1. If we represent this as an ordered pair, this would be the set of all x, y such that y is equal to 2x minus 1. This set has infinitely many elements. For example, the point 0, negative 1 is an element of your relation R. Let me call this R because it satisfies this given condition. The y-coordinate is equal to 2 times the x-coordinate minus 1. Negative 1 is equal to 2 times 0 minus 1. As long as the y-coordinate is equal to 2 times the first coordinate minus 1, you would belong to this relation. Another element of this one would be 1, 1. Right? However, if I have 2, 4, this is not an element of your relation R because 4 is not equal to 2 times the x-coordinate, which is 2 minus 1. Another way of representing relations is through graphs. We have seen that these two equations can always be written as ordered pairs so we just plot those ordered pairs in your Cartesian plane and we would and we will get this graph. So for example y equals 2x minus 1 would have this graph a line x squared plus y squared equals 1 the graph of that would be a circle centered at the origin with radius equal to 1. We are now ready to discuss functions. Let x and y be two non-empty sets. This is again my set x and y a function from x into y is a relation that associates with each element of x exactly one element of y. The definition says that every element in x should go to exactly one element of y. So let's say this, this goes to y1, x4 goes to y4. This here is a function because every element of x goes to exactly one element of y. Now take note here that it's okay for two elements of x here x1 and x3 went to the same element in y. It doesn't contradict your definition. However, if we have 
let's say x1 goes to y1 and x1 goes to y2 as well. This one here is not a function. You cannot have this because in this case, x went to two elements of y. You cannot have that. What if I erase this there? Will this one still be a function? The answer is no because the definition says that each element of x should go to exactly one element of y. In this case, x4 is an element of x, but it doesn't go anywhere. So that's why in this case, it will not be a function. Here are some terminologies that you need to know. For each element in x, the corresponding element in y is called the value of the function at x or the image of x. So for example, here we say that y4 is the image of x4. We also say that y4 is the value of f at x4. I call this function f. What else? y2 is the image of x2. y1 is the image of x3. And y1 is the image also of x1. The set x is called the domain of the function. So in this case, your domain is the set x1, x2, x3, and x4. The set of all images of the elements in the domain is called the range. So therefore here, what would be the range of f? Remember that it is the set of all images. So in this case, the range of f will just be y1, y2, and y4. y3 is not included in the range of f because it is not the image of anything in x. Thus, for functions, it is possible for an element in y to be not associated to an element of x. But for every element of x, it's very important that each one of them should be associated to exactly one element of y. Given a diagram of a relation, let us determine whether it is a function or not. Let us start with the first one. Is this a function? Yes, because all the elements of x are associated to exactly one element of y. What about the second one? Is this a function or not? Yes, this is still a function, although 1, 2 is associated to the same element a, that's okay. Again, it's possible for two elements in x to be associated to one element in y. However, the third one is not a function because one element of x was associated to two elements in y. So remember that this configuration is forbidden for a function. You cannot have one element of x to go to two elements of y. Next, given a relation represented as ordered pairs, we want to know whether it will represent a function or not. So here is what you do. You know that it will be a function if there are no two distinct ordered pairs that have the same first coordinate. Why is that? What would happen if you have the same first coordinate? Suppose I have 1, 3, 1, 2, 2, 4. If we represent this as a graph, what will happen? 1 goes to 3. What else? 1 goes to 2. There you go. 2 goes to 4. You have one element in x that went to 2 different elements of y. So that is why you cannot have two distinct ordered pairs that have the same first coordinate. So this is not a function. Let's have some more examples. Let us determine whether each relation represents a function and if it is a function, let us state its domain and range. So for the first one, is this a function? Note that the first coordinates are not repeated. So, yes, this is a function. And its domain would be the set of all first coordinates you have. 1, 2, 3, 4. And your range is 4, 5, 6, 7. What about the second one? 
One, two, three, four. Okay. No first coordinate was repeated. So, yes. The domain is still one, two, three, four. And the range would be the set of all second coordinates. You have four, six, seven. Take note, it's okay for one and two to go to the same element four. You have there one goes to four, two goes to four. That's okay. For the next item, take note of this. The same first coordinate was repeated. So hence, this is not a function because this is saying that negative 3 goes to 9 it also goes to 4 it also goes to 0 lastly 9 2 4 2 2 2 and 1 2 is this a function or not yes this is still a function because no first coordinate was repeated take note that it's okay for all of these elements 9 4 2 1 to go to the same element two. The domain here is nine four two one, and your range consists of exactly one element two. Next, given a relation represented as an equation, let us check whether it will be a function or not. So the first thing that you need to do when testing whether an equation is a function, you have to solve the equation for y because you want to make sure that x corresponds to exactly one y if the equation corresponds to more than one y then it does not define a function here are some examples for letter a y is equal to 2x minus 5 for each element of x does it correspond to exactly one element of y yes how about letter b y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1 yes this is still a function because if you get 1x let's say my x is 2 I get one value for y there which is equal to 3 so 2 goes to 3 however for letter C the absolute value of y is equal to x plus 1 suppose that x is equal to 0 if x is equal to 0 this would mean that the absolute value of y is equal to 0 plus 1. So absolute value of y is equal to 1. What would be the values for y there? y can be equal to 1 or negative 1. So when x is equal to 0, it goes to two values, 1 and negative 1. So just by giving this example, you can already state that no, this is not a function because you were able to find 1x which corresponds to two values of y. So remember, when you're saying that it is not a function, you can give a counter example. What about the next one? x squared plus y squared equals 1. Is this a function or not? The answer is no as well. What would be a counter example for that? When x is equal to 0, so I will have 0 plus y squared equals 1. So that means y squared equals 1. Hence, y is equal to plus or minus 1. You would have y would also be two values, plus or minus 1. Next, we want to test whether the graph of a given relation represents a function. Let us recall again that the graph of the equation is the set of points in the xy plane that satisfy the equation. So for example here, y is equal to 2x minus 1. If I get all the points here, say this one, the y coordinate of this is equal to 2 times the x coordinate minus 1. Here also, the y coordinate here is negative 1 and that is equal to 2 times the x-coordinate, which is 0, minus 1. How do we check if a given graph represents a function? We use the vertical line test. The vertical line test tells us that if we are given the graph of a function and we get any vertical line, that vertical line must intersect the graph in at most one point. 
So that means it's possible for the vertical line not to intersect the graph. That's okay. But when it does intersect the graph, it has to intersect the graph in exactly one point. Let us look at some examples. Which of the following are graphs of functions? For this first graph here, if I draw any vertical line, let's say here, here, wherever I draw my vertical line, it will always intersect the graph at exactly one point. So hence, this graph represents a function. How about for this one? Is this a function? Take note that if I draw a vertical line here, it will intersect the graph at this two point. So hence, the answer here is no. This is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. Another example, this one. Let me draw vertical lines. Notice that it will always intersect the graph at exactly one point. If I draw my vertical line here, that's okay. It did not intersect the graph, correct? But that's okay. But when it does intersect the graph, it intersects the graph at exactly one point. Hence, this is a function. What about this one? Similarly, wherever I draw my vertical line, it will always intersect the graph at exactly one point. So the answer here is also yes, this is a function. For this graph, if I draw my vertical line here, it will intersect the graph at two points. So therefore, the answer here is no, it is not a function. For this one, if I draw my vertical line here, it will intersect the graph at these two points. So therefore, the answer here is no as well. It is not a function. 